So recently a discussion got started uh, between a couple of viewers, uh, Old Alabama Gardener and Ken Rosh, uh, about PQQ. Um, Old Alabama Gardener mentioned that he'd been taking it for a while. Um, he's taking the life extension version, and Ken Rosh was asking if it works. You know, as is usually the case with supplements, uh, uh, Old Alabama Gardener had to say, look, I don't know. I, I, I can't tell, and especially supplements associated with the mitochondria. So <clears throat> I had uh, not investigated PQQ that deeply, started looking around based on reading that uh, discussion, and found a very interesting article. Actually, it was interesting enough to where uh, I had not been taking PQQ. After reading this article, I uh, went to Amazon and ordered some. Um, <clears throat> now, why? Well, first of all, uh, two of the biggest attractants for me were, number one, the uh, quality of the journal. This was Nature Magazine. It was recent, uh, June uh, of this year. And here, look at the title. PQQ ameliorates uh, cognitive impairments. Um, and so then they get into some of the technical stuff. The D-galactose is a... Um, a model of senility which is created in uh, lab rats. Um, they also talk about how does it do it. Uh, a couple of ways. Number one is an antioxidant uh, way and another one is a signaling pathway in terms of uh, gene expression. So, hmm. let's talk about the um, uh, a couple of points here next. So, PQQ may influence the generation of pro-inflammatory pro, pro mediators, including cytokines and pro, prostaglandins, during the aging process. So let's go back and talk for just a minute about the aging process within the brain, as well as other tissue. Uh, you may remember I just did a recent video on um, mitochondria and aging. Mitochondria is where ox we use oxygen to burn um, carbohydrates, uh, fats, proteins. By, we, we burn those by adding oxygen to them. Well, when you add oxygen to something, it's called rust or burning. And you also get things like um, reactive oxygen species. That's where all of this discussion about reactive oxygen species and oxidation comes in. Actually, it appears that uh, we lose our mitochondria in the aging process uh, because the mitochondria start getting burned up by all of this peroxide. Uh, most folks in the baby boomer, boomer generation remember when we were teenagers, kids used to use peroxide to um, take the color out of their hair until they realized how badly it burned the hair. Well, that's going on on a regular basis inside our cells associated with the oxygenation uh, within our mitochondria. In fact, use of this glutamate, uh, the GLA, uh, the DGL, GAL here, is, um, is a way that, that they demonstrate that it's a lab model for showing um, increased or early aging. Now you do have uh, other pro-inflammatory mediators. What does that mean? You start getting inflammation and some of the mediators are cytokines. What does that mean? Cyto means cell, kinds means uh, chemicals that attract. So these are chemicals that attract. Um, as you start burning tissue around that mitochondria, you have chemicals that attract inflammatory cells, immune cells. Prostaglandins are also involved in it as well. So, <clears throat> they saw something else that was very interesting. Uh, in a previous uh, study that they did, they saw that PQQ statistically enhanced superoxide dismutase. Again, another huge word, but it's all related to this item. Superoxide dismutase is basically just a protein that we've developed as mammals to combat this reactive oxygen species, this peroxide. What it does is it, um, it busts up peroxide before it can burn too much tissue. 
In fact, what they've done in labs is they've created, they have genetically uh, altered mice to where they don't have uh, superoxide dismutase, the gene to create it. Those mice develop early senility, very similar um, to the mice that they chronically feed levels of uh, glutamate. So again, same process going on. You're not handling all of the, the reactive oxygen species, the oxidation that's going on around the mitochondria. It's burning up your uh, neurological tissues, your brain. So that's uh, a couple of the mechanisms that they're talking about here. That's when they get into the upregulation of expression of PAKT by D, you know, all of that stuff. Basically, what they're talking about is we bring that oxygen in, we burn, uh, use that ox, we burn um, again uh, carbohydrates, fats, proteins by combining it with the oxygen. Combining anything with oxygen is rust or inflammation or burning. Um, it, some of the byproducts can be uh, peroxide. We, that peroxide helps burn the tissue or starts burning tissue around the mitochondria and damaging and even destroying cells. We've developed some countermeasures for that, like superoxide dismutase, which will go in and, and hit that, uh, degrade that, dismu that uh, peroxide early. But now they're saying they've found a supplement that'll actually do that. I'm not a huge believer in supplements. I, and here's why. Uh, lifestyle, by far, is usually the biggest uh, impact on our health. Um, and you can't supplement your way out of a bad lifestyle. You just can't do it. Uh, but as you get older and uh, things start wearing out anyway, sometimes it's helpful to have a little help. So I've gotten more interested in uh, supplements uh, recently. One of the big pro well, I won't go on about supplements. So here's the other thing. I mentioned there were two things that attracted me about this study. One is the, the journal that it's in, very highly respected journal. The other is the dramatic results that they showed. Now here, I'll go through a few slides on this showing the images of these dramatic results. Um, now, if you're just, uh, let me explain something here. This is spontaneous alteration. In other words, this was where mice just started. They had learned uh, their maze, how to get through a maze. But mice that were fed glutamate on a regular basis started just doing weird stuff, taking wrong turns unpredictably. So these were the control mice. The glutamate uh, mice uh, started having problems. These are PQQ mice. They didn't have a problem. And these last group were the uh, glutamate mice after you fed them PQQ. So in other words, um, you actually got improvement in the perf cognitive performance of the mouse, by, of aging mice, by giving them PQQ. This was another parameter. This was looking at latency. In other words, uh, how long they remembered how to do this. Again, the, the glutamate aging mice didn't remember as long. PQQ mice, um, not that much of a significant difference. But if you fed the PQQ back to the glutamate um, treated mice, you started to get that improvement again in cognitive performance in yet another parameter of this cognitive performance. Here's looking at error rates. Again, same thing. Once you increased error rates with uh, glutamate, once you added the PQQ back to the glutamate, it stopped the, uh, the error rate again. Same thing with some other things. So they said they went back and, and these, uh, these results are not so much to do with the cognitive performance like the others. These results have to do with indicators of inflammation. And sure enough, uh, MDA... Uh, reactive oxygen species, which we've been talking about and you hear a lot about, uh, they looked at those as well. And again, so you see a huge increase in reactive oxygen species in the glutamate-fed rats, um, and it, it's knocked out again when you add that PQQ. Um, again, similar results with TAOC and MDA, which were other indicators. Now, I'm going to take a digression for a second, and I'm going to introduce myself and my channel. 
I've had plenty of folks discuss it. I know some folks don't like it. Most folks uh, sort of grin and bear it, and some even appreciate it. Here's the reason that I do this. Um, a lot of folks see, our, see videos just out of the blue. They've not seen any other videos from the channel. They need to know what the channel's like uh, to make a decision. Well, this may be an interesting video, but do I want to go look at others in the area? And what's, what's the channel all about? So briefly, my name is Ford Brewer. I started off my career as an ER doc. Got very passionate very quickly about the fact that most disease and disability is preventable. Um, there wasn't much place to learn that um, back over 30 years ago when this was going on with me. Uh, Hopkins was one place. I went there and uh, they had a great program in clinical prevention. I loved the activity. Um, ended up running the program there. Um, but left soon to go out into the real world and have spent over three decades helping uh, large primary care docs, 800 docs or more, uh, focus on preventing disease instead of waiting until disease happens. Um, after a career of doing that and seeing my share of patients as well, it's always frustrated me, me that more people were not involved in this prevention conversation. So that's what this channel's about. It's about uh, getting that conversation uh, about the science of prevention out there, getting people less dependent on cures because cures don't work nearly as well. Uh, ask your, your um, anyone you know that's had a heart attack or a stroke. So uh, back to some discussion on this article, and then we'll, uh, we'll end it up. Um, <clears throat> as, as I said earlier, uh, DGAL, or glutamate, induces changes uh, which resemble the natural aging in animals like cognitive dysfunction, oxidative stress, neurodegeneration. It's been used as a, um, a lab rat model for aging and senility. It causes accumulation of reactive oxygen uh, species, in vivo, meaning in the rat itself, not just in the lab. That would be in vitro. It's the critical excitatory neurotransmitter. Now, this is an interesting part. I haven't covered this yet and um, wanted to make a couple of points about that. In fact, just learning this recently, um, this article was a huge uh, help in that area. Uh, glutamate is a major, it's a critical excitatory neurotransmitter in the central nervous system. Now, why is that important? Well, it's that critical, maybe there's some significant association with critical ongoing excitation of our brains and this oxidative stress. In fact, it is the excited, it's an excitatory neurotransmitter. Neurotransmitter means uh, a way to, for the brain to um, communicate something from one cell across the synapse to the other cell. You know, there are synapses or connections between cells. During the cell, in the cell it goes, the, the Excitation goes electrically, but then there has to be a transmission from one cell to another. That's a neurotransmitter. Um, depression drugs work by impacting the neurotransmitters involved with depression. And um, glutamate is involved in excitation in 90% of the pathways. So what they're saying is, and here's where the, the, the dot connection comes in. It's like, oh, you know what? We associate uh, chronic mental stress as a, uh, as a way of aging quickly. Well, here's a clear biological model for that. And again, so what they're discussing is they've, just, they've done previous research which has supported this activity. Um, this research does as well, saying that PQQ does actually decrease um, that entire uh, oxidative process, the inflammation process, and they go into some discussion here. As you remember from uh, uh, my previous coverage of uh, inflammatory um, markers, it decreased inflammatory markers, it decreased oxidation, and uh, it decreased excitation. Um, 
This one goes into the issue of superoxide dismutase. And um, I, I'll just cover that briefly. Um, it gets a little bit geeky, but it's, again, the uh, consistent with this these recurring themes. That superoxide dismutase, again, is... Um, there are some rats that have been genetically bred to no, no longer have superoxide dismutase. Those rats get old fast, and um, you don't have to remember the term superoxide dismutase, but what you do need to remember is, how do they get old? Uh, those rats can't handle the uh, peroxide, the other oxygen radicals that are created by, their, by the uh, mitochondria in their brain. So again, a lot of interesting dots to connect. Uh, those of you who have made it this far, I really appreciate your uh, interest. And um, as I said before, I, uh, I'm going to go get some PQQ. Uh, I'm not planning on that uh, replacing, keeping my weight down, continuing to do uh, high intensity intervals, uh, monitoring my inflammation, uh, watching my uh, blood sugars uh, and my carbs. Thank you again.